So in today's quick VFX Cinema 4D tutorial, we're going to create this cool twister effect using MoSpline. So I'm just going to get started. I'm going to create a MoSpline. And I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Zoom out a bit. Okay. So we can basically animate this using the start and end sliders like that. So I'm just going to plot some keyframes. I'm just going to take it back to zero, go to frame 10, hold down control, click on end, and then I'm going to go to frame 60 and increase the end slider to 100%, control click to create a keyframe. Actually, uh, in this new version of Cinema 4D, version 16, you basically don't have to hold down control, you can just click uh, the button. So let's just play that back and we have the spline growing out, very simple. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit. Now, if I try and render this scene, you can't really see anything. So I'm going to um, create a sweep in herbs. I'm going to put the most spline inside the sweep and I need a cross section. So I'm going to create a circle, put that above the most spline. So if I render this now, as you can see, we can see the spline. Okay, next, I wanna use a bend deformer. So I can't actually add the bend deformer to the sweep. So what we do is, I'm just gonna put it below the sweep, select both and hit Alt G to group. Now that they're grouped together, the bend will affect the sweep. So I'm just gonna play with the bend uh, it's facing the wrong way, so I'm going to hit R and just rotate it. Hold down Shift to snap to 10 degree increments. And maybe 90 degrees, no that's fine. This is the angle I want. As you can see the spline is bending slightly. In bend, I want to choose unlimited, so it kind of carries on bending. And I can adjust the strength. So I'm just going to keep it there for now. I'm actually going to double click the bend to just hide it. And I'm also going to double click the most spline. So all I can see is now the sweep. I'm just going to make the sweep a bit thicker. So we can go to the most spline and uh, under simple, we can actually adjust the width. I'm just going to go into my bend and just bend this a bit more. So it's almost like uh, 360 degrees. Okay. So the reason we use the most spline is because we can do some cool stuff. Uh, we can kind of angle it under simple. Uh, we can change the angle, change the bank, uh, add curvature, uh, bend it and twist it. We can increase the length, which is what we want. So I'm just going to increase this length to about a thousand. So we've got a few kind of bends. As you can see, it gets a bit jagged. So I'm just going to increase the steps till it looks a bit smoother. Uh, we can turn on hidden line. Just going to pull the steps back a bit. Get about there. Okay. So if I just play this back, we have this very simple animation. Now what I want to do is, I'm just going to click on most spline. And I'm going to increase my frame range to 120. Now, under object, I basically want um, to create a keyframe for start on frame 60. And then I'm going to move to frame 120 and make start 100%. So it basically grows out and then it disappears. So the animation should look something like this. So it looks very simple right now. Um, I'm actually going to uh, adjust the animation curve. So I'm just going to right click animation F curve. I'm going to select start and end. Hold down control to select both. So I can see both curves here. And I'm just going to make them overlap a bit. So I'm just going to move that here, 0%. Just make sure it's set to 100%. And 
I want it to actually speed up at the end. So I'm just going to take this tangent handle and make my curve graph look something like this. It doesn't have to be identical as long as it's something like this. I'm just going to play this back. Let's see what happens. So that's a bit better because um, there's less of a delay. Actually, I might just increase um, this tangent a bit, make it a bit more extreme. Okay. So we can fiddle around with this a bit more later. For now, I'm just going to put everything into a cloner. So I'm going to go MoGraph cloner, put this null that contains all my sweep and my bend deformer. I'm going to put that into the cloner. Uh, I'm going to set it to linear, so that's fine. So we basically get three clones of this now. Problem is they're all animating at the same speed. Um, so we want to make this a bit more interesting. We can actually adjust the step rotation, kind of just shift them slightly down here. I don't want to bend it that way or that way. But uh, we can increase the counts. I'm just going to keep it low for now. Four counts. Maybe just stagger them a bit. But uh, the interesting effect is going to come from the step uh, effector. So I'm just going to go to MoGraph, effector, step. And uh, by default, scales checked. So I'm just going to leave that. That's fine. Position might just add some position stepping. But the really important one is the time offset. So I'm just going to increase this to maybe 20 frames. So now we've got this staggered kind of animation. They all animate at different times. And this animation is a bit slow, so I can actually just go back to my most spline. And I can just kind of bring these keyframes a bit closer together. I'm actually just going to hide that circle as well. I think that's appearing at the beginning. So it's kind of getting there. Uh, next, I'm just going to go on my sweep and open up details. You can actually define the scale here. So I'm going to control click the middle to create another point. And then I'm just going to drop this down. So it's basically thin, fat, and then thin again. I just pull it out slightly. And I'm going to increase my most blind thickness again, a bit more. Width, something like that. So that looks a lot more interesting. The thing is, there's, there's a bit of a delay at the end, which I don't like. It kind of gets stuck here. So that's to do with our animation curves, basically. Again, I'm just going to adjust them a bit more. Select them both. So I think I need to just bring them a bit closer together. Out here, just make sure they're at 100%. And I might just increase my frame range a bit more. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's much better. Looks maybe a bit dodgy at the end, but I think that's the general effect I was looking for. You can keep tweaking this. Um, the great thing is you can basically stop it here and then go to most spline and then have a good fiddle with these kind of curves and um, bend. You can get all kinds of crazy effects. Yep. You can even adjust these on the fly, I think. So that's the end of this tutorial. I um, hope that's something useful you can use. If you found it useful, please share this video. And thanks for watching.